woman who changed my life. Oh my goodness, I can't believe you're saying that about me. No, it's true, it's true. I, I went into the screening of this film on a Sunday at 10 a.m. and I didn't know what to expect going in. This film has so much to say and it has so many tones and themes and why did you choose not to be in and out of curiosity? When when I was writing, at first I was... Because you wrote this, too. I did. I, I wrote it. I, well, I co-wrote it, but I did write it, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, every incredible thing in this film is your responsibility with the beautiful team of people you built to help carry out that vision. And yeah. I'm a big sharer of credit, but I also want to make sure everyone understands that this is your brainchild. This is my brain. This is my brain. People are now seeing how... I think, which is very vulnerable and, and scary. It is vulnerable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but when I was I was when I was writing, I, I when I decided to direct it because it was it is so specific to my brain, and I just didn't know how to explain this to someone else for them to direct. And so as soon as I decided to direct, I just knew I you know I, I didn't want to be in it. One, so I could focus on the job, and right. but then also I was I think the relationship between a director and an actor is really special. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact that I, I'm able to see things about the actors that they can't see about themselves and heighten them and bring them out, you know, I think, I think that's sacred, you know, so. You know, your beautiful fiance, he put out this Instagram post. Is it all right if yeah, I mention yeah, it? Yeah, of course. One of the reasons, well, there's a few reasons I love it so much. And first of all, <laughs> this is so romantic. Oh my God. But there is text within this very beautiful, romantic glimpse. It says, she's so tired. Every time I wondered if she'd break, she just kept going and going and going. Mm. Always on the dig for the truth, she poured every single ounce of her into this film. And I'm so proud to stand 10 toes down for her, this film and everyone in it forever, knowing what it took to make it. No one will ever know. Thank you for finding me and seeing me. I know. <laughs> oh my God. What I love about this, may I call him Channing? I don't yeah, know yeah. him. Yeah, Chan, call him Chan. Oh, okay. Well, when Chan <laughs> is, um, he does, he, he, you direct him in this scene, and I don't want to give anything away, but in my opinion, there needs to be a big Academy Awards campaign push for his performance. I think so too. Because it's one of the greats. It's one of the finest performances I've ever seen. And he also goes to places that are very risky. Yeah. How did he know to trust you? He was willing to go to places that I think any actor would be terrified to go to. Yes. I, I mean, I think, I think he was excited because... You know, I think oftentimes people think of Channing Tatum and they just, you know, they think about the dancing and the charisma. And he's very handsome. He's like very funny. Likeability. Yeah, exactly. That's and what he that's, risks in this film. And that's why I cast him. You know, I, I when I was, I, I didn't know him until this film. And so when I was writing, I was thinking about who could play this part. And there were a few reasons why I wanted Chan. One was I felt in my heart that he was a feminist. Magic Mike to me are feminist films. They are Love they are films. about men, but they are for women. Yes. And so I saw those films and I was like, I think I think this guy like gets it, you know? And I also knew that the character of Slater King needed to be someone that we trust. And, you know, I wanted to weaponize his charisma. Yep. Now, when I was watching the film, um, something that really affected me personally. There's a lot about substances in the film. Mm -hmm. I was shocked to realize that part of my journey that I was looking to find the trauma inside of me and what is it about, a big part of it was I used to be a blackout drinker. And so watching this film was an extraordinary journey for me to forgive myself for mm. that because I've put myself in situations I shouldn't have put myself in and I felt so much shame about that. And I haven't had a drink in five years. Oh my God, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and it is not only a film about the things that can happen to us, but it made me think about the things we've done to ourselves. Yes. And was there any part of you that was aware of that 
in making it? Because there's so many messages being brought up here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the substances were, I think, more of a way to, you know, get the characters to the most vulnerable place possible, you know? When you let yourself go and you lose yourself, it's so easy for things to spiral out of control. And to your point as well, when we allow ourselves to be in those kinds of situations, there's so much shame when we get to the other side. So, you know, we make mistakes, we hurt ourselves, we get hurt by others. Yes. And then oftentimes we are left to deal with the consequences on our own. You know, there's always that feeling or idea of like, well, you drank it, you got on the plane, you wore the short skirt, you know, and it's, it's just so much more complicated than that. I think so many answers are in your film <laughs> because a lot of it is also about to forgive or forget, but it's to remember yes. that might be our greatest power. Yes, to wake up. Yeah, okay, so I wanna get a snake tattoo because your movie, you get bit, and I got bit and I woke up because of you. Well, I have one too, I'll have matching ones. <laughs>